And we should be live. We're live. All right. Well, everyone, welcome to the logistics of marketing. Uh, today we have with us uh, Kevin Coombs and Scott Hadley. Welcome, guys. Um, Nick, why don't you give us uh, kind of an intro to what we are going to be covering on today's show? All right. So <clears throat> today's topic is partnerships. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, we hear all the time about how transportation is a relationship industry. And part of that involves the partnerships you develop with other companies. I see it a lot in the tech world where it seems like someone is announcing a new partnership every week, but you also see brokers and carriers and tech companies partnering together just to help augment their existing services. Like we're going to dig deeper into this, but like Scott and Kevin, let's see, you want to do a quick intro of yourself, kick it off with Scott. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I come from the brokerage world. Uh, spent over a decade on that side of the side of the business. Seven of which were building a brokerage, and so I, I got a lot of hands on of you know what goes on with vendors, with partners, um, and, and kind of what we call that. And now the last year and a half been over here at HubTech, um, and currently handling all our partnerships, and then work a lot with our product strategy, which go direct hand in hand um, to work together. So thanks for having Perfect. me. Perfect. No, thanks for being on. Uh, Kevin, want to do a quick intro? Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate you guys having us on. Um, so my background, about the same as Scott's, about 10, 11 years in the industry, uh, in particular on multiple sides of, of the, the equation from consulting with uh, Care Direct Metaphora for a few years. And then I was doing day to day freight for a couple of years, brokerage, led a sales team there, and then moved over to the tech side about six years ago. So worked on the TMS side with Revanova for about five years, helping grow uh, their sales and marketing efforts. And then now moved over to green screens about four months ago. And now I'm working with, uh, you know, AI and machine learning and pricing and all that fun stuff. So awesome. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to hearing both of you guys and your perspectives on strategic partnerships. Like everyone kind of knows my shtick. Zach, do you want to do a quick, quick intro of yourself here? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Zach Ramirez, I am the director of business development at a marketing agency called Dexia. And we actually specialize in providing marketing uh, to uh, folks that are in the logistics and supply chain industry. So everyone from brokers to freight tech companies uh, to even some shippers as well. So um, yeah, so as you guys know, and, and as we were talking in our pre, uh, you know, prep call, right, we, we hear this word partnerships a lot, right? Um, we know that partnerships are important, um, but we also talked about like really wanting to gain some of the perspective that each of you have gathered in your tenure within the industry and really just be able to dive into that and share some thoughts and maybe even educate along the way on how we should be viewing this you know, word partnerships, right? So with that, why don't we dive into our first question? I'd love to hear from both Scott and Kevin. Scott, we'll start with you, but why even partner with, a num like, with another company, right? Like what's what are some of the benefits on that? What's the why behind it? Yeah, uh, there's, there's gonna be multiple reasons. You know, we're all gonna have our own strategies depending on our business models and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I, I break it down into four areas from the, from the actual you know partnership side of partnering with other tech companies because we can blur those lines sometimes where you know we'll call customers partners and then people can start getting a little confused of like no we never do that scott as a sales tactic <laughs> it's like, what do you mean what does partnership actually mean <laughs> right right um and so from that the product side and sometimes we call it alliances to separate those lines so yeah. Uh, from that, I, I look at three different there are four different things. So market image, um, you know, is there a large industry player that just by association can boost our brand? Um, is it market reach? And that could be, you know, an industry expert or another company, again, that maybe can get us into different verticals um, or just larger reach in general. Um, Product development, of course, or product enhancements. And that's not just our product, but our partner's product as well. Um, and that's, you know, features, functions, or speed to actually grow the product. Hmm. And then fourth one will be revenue generating through the resellers or through mutual referral um, programs. So those are the four I look at for, 
for a little bit of our strategy and who we're looking to partner with. Awesome. And I think we'll dive into that that strategy piece a little bit later on. But Kevin, what about for yourself? Like, why partner with another like another company? What does that mean? You know, maybe in your seat at Green Screens or even your experience, you know, previous to Green Screens. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think to kind of build off of what Scott said, I think there's kind of key areas where when you're going out to look for partnerships with other companies to identify those um advantages right to, to to creating those relationships with one another i think there's the commercial side of it we're all in business to make money so <laughs> right being able to provide a, a mutually beneficial uh, solution to someone or a, a, you know a monetarily beneficial solution right to both parties i think that's always important and we'd be kidding ourselves if we didn't talk about that right scott and i work together and we we trade leads. All right. Let's be honest, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. there's there's a there's an advantage there. Right. And how that we can service customers stronger together than apart. Right. Mm -hmm. And so so that's obviously very important. I mean, there's a psychological thing with sales. Right. If somebody else tells you like an external party to go look at that thing or buy that, then they're more apt to do it. Um, so that's obviously incredibly important in that that discussion. But I mean, I, I think the other thing in terms of partnering is to Scott's other point about uh, value creation, right? Is it, mm -hmm. does it, does it strengthen our product? Does it strengthen the, the, the service delivery to a customer? Does it create uh, better efficiencies within an organization? Right. Mm -hmm. And especially with value creation, I mean, there's a couple different factors there, right? Uh, when we look at the partnerships that we have today and the people that we're looking at, it just has a specific example. With green screens, we're looking at truckload pricing, being a pricing engine for the industry. Do we really want to go build bid automation? Mm -hmm. uh, do we really want to go build another AI for capacity matching automation? Or so like that's a lot of time and effort and cost <laughs> to do that. I'm not gonna, I don't want to go hire another 17 AI and machine learning developers just to do that, <laughs> right? When we're focused on core products. So I think there's a lot of factors in there. Um, on that side, you know, apart from the commercial and the relationship and the brand image side, mm. like Scott mentioned, but also on the value creation side of what what we can gain out of creating those efficiencies for our customers as well that we look at in particular. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so I mean, there's obviously, you know, some mutual you know benefits here. And, and you guys you guys touch on a couple interesting things. Right. So like from, you know, the brand positioning side. Right like really being able to leverage these partnerships and play to people's strings. But I have to imagine that there's, you know, some groundwork that you would have to lay in the brand messaging, right? Like as you're going out to your customer audience, like how you position, you know, these, you know, these two partners, right? Like what, what is some of the process that's involved in that? Like when you take on a new partner, like, is this like a like is it months and months of like developing the messaging so that you're going out to your audience in the right way like why don't we dive into some of that starting with you kevin yeah so you know it's like two dogs circling each other sniffing each other's butts right trying to figure out what what works here what does it no yeah. <laughs> i mean you do kind of have to do that song and dance a little bit right like um because you got to understand how that relationship works right if you if you align on the the image and the brand that you want to present and what you want to do out there um and so yeah i mean i think it's it's tailoring and then once you establish that right you want to establish that up front does this make sense does this make sense for our customers for our organization our own sales and marketing people and then once you do establish that i think it becomes um a process of exactly what you said where let's make sure that the messaging is tight right that we're going out to market uh together and announcing this partnership in a clean manner where there's no confusion about what each company does um and this works for tech but this also works for you know brokerages or anybody else right that are partnering with a tech partner or they're yeah. partnering with another organization a carrier right to create a new network or something uh of like you know final mile delivery or something i mean it's it's having that alignment on where each player in the partnership is providing that value mm. and so that it because partnerships can you could also, if you go out with a muddied message, you could you could make it worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> In terms yeah. of confusion around, well, don't you guys do the same? Thing? Well, you're a broker and they're a carrier, and what, what does yeah. that even mean to yeah. me? You know, 
you, you definitely want to have that tight. So I think going through that process, having that that mixed marketing message so that it's it's clean and 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 succinct, I think is really important in that. Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> kind of tying into that messaging, like I see these partnerships pop up a lot. And sometimes it's giant, it seems like a flash in the pan where there's an announcement and then like, oh great, now what? How do you go about making sure that you strategically approach them so that they're actually sticky and they're more than just a publicity announcement and then nothing happens. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Um, you know, just starting a partnership and announcing it is kind of the easier part to it. And alluding more back to Kevin of, you know, getting the groundwork done and going around in circles like that. It's a little easier for us because we come from the industry. And so we know who a lot of these players are. And so we can just go to them and say, Hey, this is how we sync up. Mm -hmm. um, we already have the ideas and the the basic knowledge of how we're going to work together. So it's a little easier from us from that standpoint, but it's the continued extension from that um, of where the real value comes for everybody. So mainly the market, you know, when they hear it and they're like, cool, they reach out immediately. How are you guys working together? We need our entire sales team to understand it because they're the ones that are actually discussing it from there and talking about how this partnership works together. Um, just mm -hmm. that announcement is more of mm -hmm. get it out there on the radar. It's really the sales team has to know how this works, explain it. And now we both have that benefit um, from the partnership. So mm -hmm. it, it's more, a little more behind the scenes. You don't really see much continued uh, marketing around that. We may do a webinar together, you know, every few months or whatnot, but it's really solely on our sales team to, to keep tying that in, you know, each demo, each conversation. And it's uh, to kind of add to that too, like, and Scott and I've had a lot of these discussions because we just announced a partnership. <laughs> so it's pretty relevant. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's to Scott's point about it, about being behind the scenes, it's almost like working with a customer, right? When you're following up, Hey, how thing? How are things going? How can we improve? Right? Are we? Are we? Are you? Are we delivering the right value to you? You know, we have those same kind of discussions on a partnership perspective behind the scenes. Is are you? Know, you have to kind of keep massaging that relationship to make mm -hmm. sure that it continues to add value on both sides. Or, like you said, Nick, it will just be an announcement and then go away. You <laughs> have to. It's like, it's like a marriage. You got to work at it, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, it requires that kind of. Uh, background as well. And, and to Scott's point, it, it has to it has to disseminate to your workforce. It has to get to your salespeople, your marketing people to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Hmm. Yeah. And um, so looking at the salespeople for a second, how like, how do you get them involved in conveying the value of of the partnership? We kind of talked about the, the value of the partnership to the two parties directly involved, but like What's that end value to your customer, ideally? How do you get your salespeople to, to even talk about that? Hmm. Yeah, we do a lot of tip, our typical partnership engagements. We have, you know, what we have to go through. And part of that is our partner jumping on with our sales team to give them that overview of everything they do straight from them. Um, you know, if we are really familiar and we know each other really well, then we can talk to our sales team about it um and, and explain it all and but we reinforce and make sure they understand over time but we like to have the partner involved with our sales team to hear it directly from the partner yeah i think it's also helpful um to synthesize the messaging as well I, like yeah. if i'm going to do a demo with someone on green screens right i'm going to spend an hour with them take them through the product help them understand what what we're doing, why we're doing mm -hmm. it, and, and the value of it. Uh, I don't expect hub tech to do that. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. to it's to help those salespeople get those bullet points. So when you know uh, they're talking to a customer, you know, one of our partners has a conversation, and they're like, "Great, uh, it'd, it'd be really cool if I could get a pricing engine behind this to automate the, the pricing component." Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's this thing called green screens, right? Yeah. And then the, hit those couple of talking points. This is what they do. This is, you know, this is why we partner with them. I can set you up with a demo, mm -hmm. but keeping that in their mind and giving and arming them with just those 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 talking points, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's interesting you guys say that, right? Because one thing that we encounter 
like on the agency side a lot when we're working with clients, right? Is like messaging has to remain fluid, right? You can't just like roll it out to your sales team once and expect like, yeah, everything's going to be fine for the next 24 months. Like as you're getting this feedback from clients and, you know, hearing what features they may be like really, uh, you know, resonating with, right? That messaging has to almost, you know, be a constant living and breathing thing. So I love, you know, hearing that you guys are even doing that in an, in an active partnership. So yeah, it's very great. Um, yeah. Kind of a follow up question that, so you guys are touching on a lot of like these positive byproducts, um, you know, to partnerships, to finding, you know, a great uh, vendor that you can partner with. Um, I have to imagine that there's some negative byproducts on the flip side, right? Like, maybe there wasn't the right vetting of a partner and there's some negative byproducts, but, you know, just to kind of poke into this, like, I'd love to kind of compare and contrast, like from your guys' experience, what are some of the negative byproducts and positive byproducts of partnerships in general? Scott, why don't we start with you? Yeah. Negatives is really for me. Be nice. Scott. You do the vetting correctly. There, there really shouldn't be a negative to the end user, to the marketplace. Yeah. Um, it's the ones that are just fast and loose because they want partners, partnerships um, and just announcements. Those ones are going to have a lot of trouble because the market's going to come to them and be like, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, what does this mean? I'm like, ah, I don't know. I refer them over. Partners, <laughs> um, and so if we're doing it correctly, there's not a lot of negative to it. There's downsides sometimes or there's struggles of, look, we're dealing with tech on both sides of it. And we have tech teams on both sides. We have our mm -hmm. own priorities and those shift and we all stay pretty agile. And so we may start a partnership and have this three quarters of the way there. So we announce it, we're ready to go. And all of a sudden we hit a roadblock. Um, and that's a, that's a tough one for the market because then they're like, we just threw out some BS partnership that we can't even utilize. Oh, great. And that's, we have to explain like, no, it's here, here and, and go through that. So it can have definitely backfire if it's too premature or if it's not legit and it's, you know, just kind of a facade. Um, that'll be a big backfire. But hmm. at the end of the day, if you do it right and you know who you're dealing with and how you're going to work together, there really shouldn't, there better not be a downside. <laughs> I'll put it that way. There better not be a downside. Yeah. So just yeah. like, I, I, I agree with you and I, like, it makes sense that there wouldn't be a downside if you're doing all of your vetting appropriately in that vetting process. Like, what are some things that you look for? Are there warning signs where like, Hey, this person's doing this. I don't want to partner with them. This is going to be miserable. Is there other things that you look for? Oh yeah, oh, I can let Kevin yeah. do that first. Oh, <laughs> Kevin, of course, sure. Scott. <laughs> there are there's no, there's, there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let Kevin take that one. Uh, yeah, there are, there are. I mean, there's. We got Zach. He'll censor this. <laughs> yeah, is there a dump button? Um, and, there's yeah. definitely things. Yeah. No, there's definitely things. Yeah, there's absolutely pieces of the relationship that you need to analyze in terms of value, right? And, and what what your vision and your goal is for your brand, your product, uh, the messaging that you're putting out there, because it's not going to align with everybody. Um, you know, one of my favorite like lines is business isn't personal, right? I might even be good friends with somebody and they're like, yeah, we want to partner. I'm like, that's not it doesn't make sense. You know, like it, it, your product, our product, the way this works, right. I think you're a great guy, but I, I don't think we're going to create a lot of value for customers in this relationship. Right. right? And so I'm not just going to put out a piece of PR, like Scott said, just for no reason at all, right. you know, just to maybe leverage your brand image or my brand image or, or what have you. And so I think there is, there's alignment of vision and values that is really important there yeah. on that front. Um, we, we are kind of, if just as a green screens example, we are very, very much uh, taking a tact of kind of a logistics ecosystem, right? We, the, the industry is fragmented. Uh, we need to start sharing data. We need to start integrating systems more effectively, right? So that there's a, there's a quote to cash kind of value chain process there. 
because we are never going to be able to stop the fact that the industry is fragmented with a bunch of owner operators and different trucking companies and brokerage intermediaries and shippers going to brokers, shippers going direct to carriers. You can't, that's not, that's unfixable. But what we can fix is, is integrating the, the technology behind those processes so that uh, the data flows are clean and good and that we can, you know, like we can strengthen hub techs bid automation by providing a better pricing strategy, right? So that the, 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 mm -hmm. the quote to cash process is cleaner for our customers. They see more volumes, they, they win more shipments, they get more margins, but there's some people that don't see it that way yeah. in the industry, right? There's some people that, that think it's all a, a big data play. And they're, mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be the winner, right? That's going to grab all the data and that they're going to solve the whole process. We don't really see it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's too expensive. It's, it's too time consuming to try to be a catch all for the whole industry. And so mm -hmm. like things like that, right? Like where, you know, we might go into a partnership conversation with somebody and they're like, yeah, just give us all your data and we'll share you re share revenue with you. We're like, I don't think you understand what we do here. Like, that's, yeah. not, that's not really what we're aiming to do. Um, and so I, I think I think those things are important to think through uh, and, and to take it past tech, right? It's the same thing if you're going to integrate, you know, your systems with your shipper or you're going to integrate with your carriers, right, to build those relationships tighter. Uh, it shouldn't just be yeah, I just want to go out to all my carriers and tell them they just need to get on my system so that I can get their capacity. Well, what mm. benefit does that give back to your carrier? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. You know, your carrier is going to have a negative byproduct there because they're going to be like, well, I'm, I'm maybe getting a couple more loads from those guys, but I'm not like getting any other value out of this. Right. And they're just expecting me to go to their system all the time. Um, so, it's you know, things like that, I think, are important to pay attention to when having those conversations and aligning mm. the values of your organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just to, you know, to, to put a bow on that, right. So you mentioned like aligning on values, aligning on vision, like right at the top end as you're betting, then also like how that actually flows through to the value that you're providing, uh, you know, to the end user. Right. So I love those three points. Um, Scott, does anything else like come up in your mind as a, you know, potential red flag that you might uncover, like during this vetting process. Yeah. Um, kind of the two I look for to make it, I look for innovation. Um, I want companies that are forward thinking and, and are trying to build something that really provides value, not mm -hmm. the same old song and dance and, or staying stagnant with what they have. I don't see that as a sustainable partner. That's, mm -hmm. that's not our values and vision. So I don't want that. I want innovative companies that are doing things differently. Um, and also their tech. We got to look at their tech and see how it's actually built. Um, is this, you know, patched and pieced together over the last years? And we can't really work together. We can on the surface level. But when we really get down to it, you know, we can't actually work together to what we need to be doing for the market. Um, so we look at the tech. Is it newer? Is it, you know, pulled down, stripped down, rebuilt correctly to be sustainable long term? Um, that's where you start hearing a lot of the cloud and all that stuff. But um, clean APIs, are they all in there already? Or are we going to be building APIs with you throughout this? That's going to take a while. And so I look more at that. Are they innovative? And is their tech at a place where we can actually work together? I yeah, actually, I there's, there's a good analogy, Scott, that I like, and I'm going to steal this. It's actually Chris Lee, a good friend of mine, gave this one to me. So I'm going to give him a shout out on this before I steal his analogy. But uh, when, when you talk about like tech and innovation, right, there's a lot of people that claim they're innovating and doing things, and then it's just Taco Bell. It's the same ingredients, right? It's a new product, but it's the mm -hmm. same ingredients, just repackaged, right? Yeah. right? New yeah. shell, which is crunchy <laughs> now instead of soft, or like we put sour cream in it and it's the same ingredient. So it's like Taco Bell, that's his analogy. Like it's just repackaged, but it's the same thing. <laughs> that's a great analogy. <laughs> I like it. Um, here, I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit here and kind of ask you guys about 
from a broker's perspective, because I know you guys both both work with brokers. What should a broker look at um, if they're looking to strengthen their business and bring on a partner? Are there, are there questions they should be asking? Are there things that they should like specifically be looking for in like a tech partner? Oh, yeah. Man, I, I wish I had heard this prior in my brokerage years um, and, and knew this. I, I've learned it now being on this side. When you're vetting new, you know, tech vendors, it's not just how is this going to benefit me, but it's what is your partnership strategy? You've got to ask that tech vendor, what is your strategy? Because you need to know that when a new product comes out, say in three years and it can benefit you, but you're ingrained with these guys already. Can you add that in? Or do they say, you know, their partnership strategy is more, we're pretty much shut off. And if you want an integration, we're either not going to, or you can, but it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Um, so knowing that up front, asking that, what's the strategy? What APIs do you have? Send me the list of APIs because that's how connections are very easy and clean nowadays. Send me a list of the APIs you guys have. What can we actually get into to connect everybody? Um, and, and ask that up front. See what answers you get. If you get kind of those vague answers on partnership strategies, it's a red flag. Um, they don't really want to tell you we don't play nice with others, um, but they're also not going to overcommit to it and just tell you yes. They do. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, <laughs> if, they, if they don't have the APIs and they don't have the capability of building them, that's another massive red flag. There's only so much you can do there. And mm -hmm. so, that the partnership strategy and the connectivity to them um, and those integrations, the cost. Hey, if you want to yeah. add in another piece, how much are you charging for your APS? Are you going to charge me for these? Is mm -hmm. it a package or is it per API? So you got to ask those up front too, because that catches a lot of people off guard. Yeah. Um, is it going to cost me an extra 30 grand uh, to onboard this other tech and get them integrated? I don't know. If so, so why would anyone? Why would anyone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like I've experienced that. Like I, I look at, I guess sticker shock looking yeah, at the yeah. amount that it was going to cost me to integrate with XYZ company. I was like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, like this isn't going to happen. Cause like it just, yeah. the juice isn't worth the squeeze, which sucks is good tech. Um, Kevin, what about like, I'm sure you have thoughts on this. Are there things brokers should be looking at that Scott hasn't mentioned? Yeah, I, th I think Scott hit on a lot of the key points. I think flexibility is really important, right? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like flexible integrations, as you mentioned, uh, the willingness, right, to integrate with other systems, other data sources, right, external systems of, you, I think the big thing that I always thought about, you know, when, when I was at Revanova, right, when we talked about TMS and we were working with a lot of people was uh, your brokerage isn't just a TMS, Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's also accounting and back office. It's also sales and CRM. It's also several other pieces of technology and parts of your business that isn't just, I don't know, covering loads all day. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I, I mean, perhaps the most important piece of your business is covering loads, right? Finding carriers, getting better, better margins on on covering loads. Um, or, or, or yeah, moving, quoting and moving LTL shipments or ocean and air shipments or whatever. But, but at the end of the day, there are, you also have to acquire new customers. You also have to process freight bills. You also have to do all these other things. If your partners on a technology perspective in particular are not flexible and integratable in those ways, mm -hmm. it is going to cause you a lot more heartache than is necessary out there because the technology exists to do those things, to make those integrations easy. It may just be that that partner doesn't have that technology. And if they don't, yeah. it's, it's probably not a good partner at, at this stage yeah. in the game, right? There's, there's, there's so much capability out there to be able to make those processes much more seamless, sharing data back and forth. Right. And to Scott's point without hidden costs, right. I could, I could run a million API queries a day. It's not going to bring down green screens. I mean, it's just not like we're, yeah. we're on AWS. It's backboned by the largest cloud provider in the world. And it doesn't cost us much money to expand that infrastructure with more cloud server space, right? To yeah. allow for more computing power. Hmm. That's us, right? But 
you know, it really depends on what your partner's strategy is in that regard um, so that you're not caught after the fact, right? A year in and you, and you can't do that or they are going down or they can't integrate. And then, like you said, Nick, it's $30,000. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we actually can do that. It's $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, right. Or, or, oh yeah, you want to use our API to, to do this or that? Sure. But it's going to cost you an extra 10 or 15, $20,000 a month. Cause we're going to charge you transaction fees or something. Right. Yeah. And then you, you're already in a contract at that point. You're caught <laughs> off guard. Mm -hmm. So those are important things to, to get out of the way up front in terms of, of how they, how their technology functions and, and mm -hmm. how it integrates and what other pieces other technology pieces you can use with it to automate processes or be more efficient is really important. Yeah. yeah. So I guess kind of a follow up question to that, um, that I think is interesting, right? So, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about like having a technology like strategy, right? Like as kind of a first step in even understanding how you might go out and, you know, view partnerships or, or you know, pick the right tools, you know, understand the vendors, right? You know, I think it's interesting in our space because there's there's a lot of brokers that you know have adopted tech or are in the process of adopting technology. There's still a fair amount where it's it's such a new game to them, right? So are there are there resources that you guys know of out there? Like if there's a broker that they're like, man, where do I start? Where do I start with this? Right. We know that we need to do it, but I I don't know what my first like leg in should be. Like what resources do you reach for in building this tech strategy? Um, I mean, we kind of talked about it right before we just jumped on, right? But you look at the industry organizations, you look at the different uh, shows that are out there like Modex or mm -hmm. TIA that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're all going to be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we're all going to have booths. We're all going to be talking tech the whole time. Many of us are partnering today, right? Like we're right by Hub Tech with our booth at TIA, we're right by Freight Friend and Parade and some others that we're creating partnerships with. Um, so we're resources at those events to write, show up. You're going to learn a lot about tech while you're there. There's a lot of tech focus sessions at the event, right? Yeah. That you can go sit in that they're going to talk about integrations and APIs and visibility and, you know, and AI and things of that nature that'll give you more insights into how it's being used in the industry and how it can affect your business. And, and it's not all, it's not all about, um, you know, just going out and buying a bunch of technology. It's should I, does this make sense for my business? Right. right. Um, because you know, you want it, the one thing that I use a lot when we talk to customers too, is just references. I don't want to sell somebody the uh, uh, green screens when it's not going to provide them value in their business. Right. Cause then, you know, six months from now, they're just going to be angry because they're, they just don't see the value in it as a, as a plus for what they're doing today. And so, you know, I introduce them to my customers and I ask for references, right. When you're talking to tech vendors or people, because those customers can share with you how they're using the technology, how the best practices fit into their businesses. And it may not be for you, you know? So, so I think utilizing those other industry resources, especially in freight, build a network of other people, go to events, meet other brokers, yeah. other 3PLs, right? To get it from the horse's mouth that's using the products to understand mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't. Because it's, I think, especially in our industry, everybody knows each other pretty well. Everybody's mm -hmm. worked for everybody else. You know, they've used multiple systems. You can get a lot of insight from that, from going to those shows and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Now, Scott, like, oh, go ahead, oh, Scott. Okay. I, I was I was just gonna follow up and said to Kevin's point, education has never been easier. Um, it is so easy for us now in the industry to go get educated. Um, obviously, yes, you've got to take it upon yourself, which is easier said than done. It's just inherent in this industry that you work in the business, not just on the business. Um, we all hear that all the time. It's true, and so it makes it a little more difficult. But you've got to really be conscious of it hmm. shows like this all educational it's the purpose of them um, yeah. there's podcasts everywhere now there's on linkedin if you follow the right people and good content it's good content um and helps educate you all the associations out there now i just came from ca and over half the show was all about tech hmm. over half the show and so yeah it, it's all there it, it's very easy for you to access and get it. 
Um, but at the end of the day, also your tech vendors should be helping you along um, and saying like, all right, no, this doesn't make sense right now. I'm going to recommend you go over to these guys first, get this stuff in line, then you're going to be better positioned for here. And so, and, and again, it's kind of easier for you know, guys like Kevin and I that have been in the industry, know the different players, know the different solutions out there. So we can help a little easier and push people the right way more and make introductions. But at the end of the day, you're, the tech vendor should be helping you, not just a, a quick sale to get it to Kevin's point. And then six months later, it's, you know, a dumpster fire. Yeah. And yeah. To, to, I would say also find a person in your organization that's a bit tech savvy, hmm. right? And, and make that that's person important. the point person, right? Like, yeah. Because uh, one bad tech strategy is a lot of, you know, like, uh, what's the best way to put that? Like the inmates run in the prison, right? Like everybody's got an opinion and they're not all good opinions necessarily if they yeah. don't understand technology or they don't understand things, right? So identify identify people in your organization that, that do have a little bit of tech savviness and like have those people go out and do the research and talk to people and whatever so that they can bring it back and help it apply it to the business case. Because... Mm -hmm you know, far too often we, Scott and I both run into this in the industry all the time. Like I'm, you know, we're talking to somebody from accounting or, you know, or something. So they put somebody on the phone, right. And you're like, I don't think this is the right audience <laughs> right, for like yeah. making this decision, you know? So it's like identifying those people that can also, that, that want to get educated, that want to learn about it and, and that, that, that can go out and do it too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like I can get, I can probably guess your answer to this next one, but like we've talked about how much education is available out there, how many different tech products are available out there. Are partnerships a quantity or a quality type of thing? You know, you have all of these options. Do you try to partner with as many people as you can and it, it like, it'll benefit you or do you be more choosy with it? That's a good question. I think it, uh, I think it really depends on, I think it depends on what 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 the nature of the relationship is, right? Sure. Um, we have relationships that we're building on a commercial basis in like a value add perspective, like I was talking about before, where we can work with different partners that we can we can provide a pricing engine and a pricing strategy with green screens, and then Hub Tech can automate bids, or somebody else can automate capacity matching. So from that relationship, it's really a quality thing. To Scott's earlier point mm -hmm. about who integrates well, who's doing it well, who's innovative out there, who's not Taco Bell, um, <laughs> and the you know so that's that's a quality thing, right? Because we don't want to introduce just a bunch of integrations for twenty different capacity matching tools for no reason, just because yeah. we can do it. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing value in those relationships and that the, the integration's clean and it actually does work. <laughs> Uh, but I think there's also conversations we're having with other people that aren't entirely commercial. They're more strategic in that, like, uh, if there's a certain person that has a lot of capacity data or has a lot of information like that, we use those things in our machine learning models today for pricing prediction. Mm -hmm. More of that data that we can acquire, it strengthens our engine. And so from a quantity perspective, that's great. If we can identify key partners those could be public organizations, right? Maybe not even companies, things like that, that we can integrate to, that we can bring in more of that, that market data and things of that nature to understand what, where trucks are and what the market's doing to provide a better pricing prediction. Then quantity is good in that situation because we can, you know, we can link into more places uh, from that perspective. And then we can do the work on our end on how we use the data. So I think it's, it's a uh, kind of an either or depending on the situation for us anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it admittedly it depends question. And like I have one more it depends question that I'll throw over to Scott here. I'm assuming it's a it depends question. Is relative size a factor? You know, is it better to partner with companies that are like bigger than you, smaller than you, the same size as you, or does it all depend on what each party wants to get out of the relationship? Yeah, for for me and for us, it doesn't matter um whatsoever if there's value there to the marketplace i could care less um it could be a smaller player but they've got a real good niche product 
absolutely let's partner mm-hmm. up. Um, mm-hmm. And if we can help them grow along the way and kind of side by side with each other, that's a great partnership, which is a relationship, which we're going to be long term and working together at new solutions. Um, and flip side, if it's a much larger organization that's been around a long time and is reputable in the industry, then same thing, but you know, flipped they can help us grow and scale at a faster rate Mm. and we can learn from them. And so I don't really care large over the top, been around for a very long time versus smaller, more niche minor player. It doesn't matter at the end of the day for us, as long as that value is there and relationships are going to be built. Yes, sometimes there could be a strategy of just hook on to that larger player, even if there's no real inherent benefit to the marketplace, but we can get our brand out there. And so we may get a benefit of just visibility, but the partnership might not really be a market play. Um, So there's different ways to it. Like I said earlier, I look at four different things. Mm -hmm. So as long as they hit on one of those four, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. And there's a place for it. If they don't really hit on certain criteria. I don't really care if it's a large or smaller organization. It's got to hit on something. So, yeah, definitely it depends. Certainly. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, you, so like you mentioned some of the like branding and marketing advantages of sometimes tying in with a with a larger company. Zach, we got a couple other marketing questions here that I know we touched on a little bit at the beginning. Are there any that you want to make sure we ask of uh, Kevin and Scott today that we haven't gotten to yet? Yeah. Uh, so I think the one that would be valuable, I think, especially for our audience, is like understanding how partnerships like really expand market reach. Right. You know, market reach is different, like whether you're coming from broker side or the freight tech side or the carrier side. So, you know, I'd love to dive in and hear both of your perspectives on like, you know, let's say, uh, you know, this partnership between, you know, green screens and hub tech, right? Um, this is something that happened recently. Like, what what are the actual byproducts that you see that affect market reach? Like, is it tapping into a new, like, you know, a set of customers? Like, what does that mean, um, you know, to, to each of your entities? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the hub tech example is a good one. Right. Uh, we both have we have similar customers, obviously, that we're working with in the brokerage and 3PL space. Uh, but there's different sophistication in different brokers and 3PLs from a technology perspective and the things that they are willing and able to do <laughs> with yeah. their, their customer bases, their carrier bases, things of that nature. Um, and so, you know, just purely like if you think from an automation standpoint, right, with what HubTech's doing with Tabby, uh, there are, there's kind of two things, two values I think that we add from both the green screens and the HubTech side in combination. One is that there are a lot of larger brokers or a lot of, of, of people out there in the industry that when they have a rating engine like green screens or something, a huge thing for them is to be able to automate bids, right? To be able to automate things back to customers, whether that's inbound quotes or back out to shipper systems via API or anything like that. Uh, I kind of said this earlier, but we, you know, people are like, well, would you ever build bid automation? And we're like, no, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, I, it's not really our core competency right now. I don't really want to go out and hire a whole new team to just build AI and machine learning and things around bid automation, mm-hmm. but hub tech already did and we're integrated and it's turnkey. So there's, there's advantage there to go to them and then we can provide the rating and pricing strategy and they can automate the bid and then vice versa um, with a, like a, let's say a smaller broker, right? Whereas Tabby comes in and the smaller broker is like, great, this would be cool if I could automate these email quotes or something back to my customers. I don't have a pricing strategy that's very good. <laughs> I don't have like a full-time pricing guy that that provides, you know, data analysis and all this. And and HubTech goes, well, there's this company called Green Screens <laughs> that, that will do all the data science for you and provide the pricing engine. 
So I think from that perspective, when you talk about like market reach, there's enablement there with yeah. other partners to be able to strengthen what you already do and provide that additional step that they might be looking for in a streamlined right. process that I think is really important. The other thing too, when you talk about like getting outside of our market, like we're primarily broker 3PL today and our customer base, but we're, we want to go into the carrier market eventually. We want to go into the shipper market to do more like revenue and, and, and yield optimization management and that. Mm -hmm. um, there could be an example of a customer, and I don't know one right off the top of my head that we're working with today, but like somebody else that built a product for carriers that we could adapt our current model, leverage their technology, and then have a quicker entrance into that carrier market. Right. Right. Or into like an LTL market that we're not doing today or, or something like that. Right. A consolidated freight network market where they have a cool product and we can provide line haul cost or something. Um, so that, that's another thing. Right. Where you can leverage those partnerships and those relationships to immediately approach a whole new stream of revenue and and customers out there in that way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Scott, what about from, from your end? Does that all resonate with you? Is there anything that you would add? No, that's pretty much spot on. It's, you know, market reach is going to be, like at the end of the day, we don't all do it ourselves. Um, yeah. And so it's, we're going to partner up and it goes all the way back to earlier. If we have the correct vetting and we're partnering with the correct um, other providers out there, then it's very easy because we get these questions daily. Hey, I'm looking for a new raid engine. Hey, I'm looking for a new TMS. Hmm. I'm looking for this piece. And if we're doing our job correctly on the partnership side, then our sales team can very confidently recommend, hmm. hey, we work really well with them. We work really well with them. Um, and so it's that's a lot of the reach is yeah. partnership side, vet correctly, get the right ones in. Sales can then um, you know, extend that relationship again and be um recommending and referring to our mm -hmm. partners and that's, and think, that's two -way street so I, to add to that too scott just really thinking something if we go back to that negative byproduct thing you also don't want the wolf in the hen house either right yeah so you know when we look at a lot of partnerships too it's like well yeah it would help us maybe expand into that market but are we just teaching them how to do what we do <laughs> and then they're sure. just going to re-engineer it and then build it themselves like so which is really important right i mean sure. it's important for the freight industry too in terms of like those broker 3pl relationships they, they might have certain things they've done internally or certain tech pieces they've built or processes and you're going to go out and build that partnership something to be aware of right are you yeah. accidentally creating a competitor in the process as well sure. so that value alignment to Scott's point is incredibly important in that mm -hmm. as well. Definitely. Um, so last last question, and then we'll move into our, our hot words and phrases segment, which I'm excited about because there's some good ones in here. Um, but you guys both mentioned that there's, you know, there's an enablement, you know, portion of this, right. That has to be considered when you're, uh, when you're approaching partnerships, right. And that you have to be enabling your sales team with the right material to go out to your audience to really push the adoption that's necessary. Um, you know, when you have a new partnership. So, you know, in, in marketing, right. Like sales enablement can be like it can vary, right? It could be videos that they might be using with customers. It could be one pagers. It can be it can be a mix of things. So I guess just, you know, last thing to hear from each of you, what has some of that sales enablement material been that's been like crucial as you guys have gone out to your market to, you know, really push the adoption of your tool and of your tech? Scott. Uh, so kind of two things there from the from the partnership side of it that we're lacking in this. Mm -hmm. full disclosure um and it's just there's so much going on so for us to you know put together all the joint marketing and go out and do you know all our videos and stuff we want to <laughs> we know we need to it's we we lack on that side of it 100 percent are all just the education piece we make sure the sales team understands it so they can verbally explain when they're going yeah. through demos it's it's more targeted at that point. It's when mm -hmm. we actually are engaged already, rather than that you know marketing side of it to get engagement. So we lack on that side. I'll admit that um, mm -hmm. that I don't have those answers right now. 
Uh, yeah. Ours is strictly the verbal, the education, um, to be able to talk through it with them. Yeah. So you guys are really utilizing your sales reps for that one-on-one -on -one touch with your clients to, to really push that education. Yeah. yeah. So our, our, our marketing and using partnerships as kind of the buzz we're, we're, we're struggling at that point. And so our, our partnerships are just more strategic and yeah. educational type stuff, not, not just shiny new object. So. Yeah. There you go. Kevin, what about for you? Yeah. I mean, I'd agree. I think we could probably get better at that too. I think the one thing that we've seen um, work really well though is uh, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but really putting together those talking points, like putting mm -hmm. together one pager, right. How we're better together, right. How we're better integrated, yeah. what, what things we can provide and what value we can provide with both products right in the same situation. And I think for us, it's been um, partner by partner too right because it's, it's it's dependent on their sophistication as well and and yeah. what they want us to do and how involved we want to get yeah. i just did earlier this week actually two different tms providers <laughs> that were, were putting out some stuff i had a tia with with 3g tms and with turbo yeah. um uh i got on with turbo and did a lunch and learn they invited all their reps they recorded it okay. went through did a demo I gave them some sales material that they could put together in a folder so that their reps are aware of their own education, right? This is what green screens is. This is what it does inside of our platform. This is how it works. And then they can go and run with that. Right. Um, 3g was a little bit deeper. We did, uh, a, I actually got on with them and they recorded some sound bites, some different things that they could clip up, put into a video. Yeah take back as bullet points that they could put together for their own marketing material around the partnership, right? A quick video of what green screens is, how it fits into three G's TMS and its process. So like, I think it also depends on your partner and the, the, like I said, the sophistication of their marketing efforts and that, I mean, we're still a relatively new company, right? So yeah. I am marketing Don, our CEO, we are marketing right now, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, leverage kinetic a little bit for some assistance <laughs> on some fronts. Um, but you know, it, it's, uh, you know, as we go down that road, we're starting to think through to Scott's point, how we can be more, uh, organized on that front. Also though, we're very, we'll probably hire a marketing director in the next three to six months yeah. and. I, I'd rather they own that because I'm not a marketing person. <laughs> so, there you, go. you know, I can provide them the messaging and they can put it together, but it's, yeah, I think it's just really giving them those, um, those, those high level, those bullet points, what is green screens or what yeah. is hub tech, what is tabby and, and, and how to speak to it more effectively. Cause it goes back to my earlier point. You don't want to muddy the waters either. Right. So you want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that guys. So we are going to move into our last little section. Uh, so we've done this on every logistics of marketing episode thus far, and it's just hot words and phrases. So the reason we do this is because it's interesting in our space, right? As we're evolving, as technology comes into the space, as different buzzwords kind of bubble to the surface, it's always been interesting to me, like how sometimes they lose their intended meaning, or sometimes somebody will use like visibility, and it means a completely different thing than what visibility means on the other side, right? So with every episode and with every topic we do, we like to just kind of bring some of these hot words together in, in a kind of a rapid fire way. We just want to, you know, push these out to you guys in, in 30 to 45 seconds. If you guys can give it what it means to you or what it should mean to the space, and then we'll, we'll keep on trucking through. And we have, we have some fun ones in here. So does that sound good to you guys? Sure. I guess um, I'm, I'm not good at these, like, <laughs> on the spot. I, I think too much. So I'll you can go it. first. Scott. I'll we'll find the hardest one for you. For that. Okay. All right. We're going to start with Scott on integration. Critically important. Critically important. Um, nobody can do it themselves. You got to have integration. Love it. Plain and simple. That's good. All right, Kevin, artificial intelligence, uh, AI. Um, so the way that we look at AI and use AI, I mean, at a, at a high level, right? It's utilizing machines, computers to automate human tasks, right? And, and specifically human tasks that require 
some type of thought process, right? Or cognitive process to make a decision, right? Or to take an action. Um, it's it, people always, the AI is scary to people. They think it's like taking everything away from the rep or the person. And it's not, it's, it's really enablement, right? It's, it's really taking yeah. away those, those menial tasks or the data tasks, right? That, that a calculator can do faster than you can, right? <laughs> or a computer yeah. that can do faster than you can to, to automate processes or to, to, uh, to cut, to arrive at an action or an insight quicker. That's good. Wow. Well said. All right, Kevin, another one for you. Efficiencies. This came up a few times in our conversation today. So efficiencies, it gets tossed around a lot. What should that mean to us? Yeah, <laughs> probably is too cliche, I would think. <laughs> we, we use yeah. that word way too much without defining the context of it. Um, I think in our industry in particular, it should be defined, at least for us anyways, as how, mu how much more volume can each of my reps produce, right? How many more trucks can they cover? How many more quotes can they put out? Um, how can we maximize margin? in the organization, right? Instead of throwing darts at a wall uh, and mm -hmm. trying to come up with a price or, or trying to determine the action that we take on a load in a, in a tracking situation. Uh, I think those are the most important parts of that is really defining what those efficiencies are that drive your business forward. So whether that's volumes yeah. or margins or revenues, I, I think that's the most important piece of efficiencies. Yeah, like that. All right, Scott, RPA versus API. Be good one. Yeah. A good one. Um, so the easiest way for this without getting like technical and too deep is RPA is user level. So what you see as a human on your screen is what RPA is going to be. Mm -hmm. APIs are behind the scenes. That's where it's in scripts and codes. Mm -hmm. And so that what you see on your screen can change and it doesn't affect the automation. With RPA, what you see on your screen, if that changes the next day, that's going to affect RPA. And so it's it's front end versus back end. API is cleaner, mm -hmm. long term stability. RPA can be faster and cheaper up front. It's going to cost a lot more money over time. So awesome. All right. Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> because so this is one of those terms where I think. You know, again, it, it's it's buzzwordy right now. It's, it's almost bastardized in a way. Relationships. Oh, you need carrier relationships. We have 30,000 carrier relationships. We have, you know, whatever it is. So I want to hear this from both of you, actually. So this is out to both of you. Scott, starting with you. Uh, I'm going to try not to be relationships. I'm going to try not be too controversial. Um, <laughs> it, it is a buzzword, in my opinion. Um, people throw it around way too much, but it's one of those easy to talk, not many walk. I believe, uh -huh. um, from my experience, re relationships have to be growing together, working together, and actually have a human to human emotional tie to something. Um, and which, again, to partnerships, quantity over quality and all of that, uh, re relationships don't exist when you start getting into a lot of that. And so um, for me, it's you've got to have emotional ties as a human. Mm -hmm human with this um into what you guys are doing together yeah Is that a nice way to put it that's great kevin i like that that's no, good scott it's good uh yeah i think for me it's 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 kind of what scott said it's really based on on candor and honesty and trust right i really don't i'm a very straightforward person i don't like to beat around the bush and play games and i think in i love i love to network with people too um I, I always provide introductions that have no monetary value to me at all. Maybe I should stop doing that and start an LLC or something. But like, <laughs> I, I think networking with people is important because it's karma, right? It will come back mm -hmm. to you later on when you need right, something from someone, right? Or you need a connection to somebody inside another organization or what have you. I think that's incredibly important, not burning bridges with people. I said this earlier, right? Business and personal, they don't always have to mix. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in the industry that I keep close with that we're not like close personal friends, but we have good relationships that we share with one another in terms of networking and that sort of stuff. And, yeah. and it's, it's valuable in that way. Um, 
to be able to, you know, somebody says, Hey, <laughs> I should have a buddy in commercial real estate. It's a good example that does a lot of logistics, real estate, um, mm -hmm. out of Chicago. And I just keep like somebody, I, I'll be on the phone with somebody and they're like, yeah, we're just, you know, we're actually thinking about buying a warehouse. I'm like, I got a guy for you. I, he's, <laughs> he's in Chicago. Like he, he's actually hooked up like three of my customers in the past with warehouses and whatever, Love it. like things like that. Right. To be able to just pick up a phone, send an email and make a connection for somebody. I think is really important. And it, and it proves, it proves value beyond just a commercial relationship. with somebody. Mm -hmm. like, so R real quick, when these market flips, you guys are going to understand everybody out there what relationships mean <laughs> yeah, exactly right being able to pick up that phone and call somebody up be like i need a favor <laughs> you're, if you you're want a shameless a, plug yeah. you you check out our other team. webinar series oh yeah yeah right <laughs> from the floor i just talked with jake from exo freight about what makes a like a good versus a bad customer relationship yeah stay tuned oh nice yeah, yeah. was that from that go. linkedin post that we had that Back and there was that back and forth going on. Maybe. Probably. We haven't that aired yet. Check it out next week. <laughs> good it. deal. Awesome. Well, I think that's a good place to round out. I mean, relationships tied in with partnerships. I think there was a ton of really great takeaways today. I mean, something that was really cool here, each of you talk about was, you know, really that vetting process and how that can, like, how that really is, like, it stems from the brand, right? Like, what you agree upon and what you say is like your brand values and vision and mission, like that should flow into everything that you do as an organization. And I think that was a really cool like marketing through line, right? Is like that carries into the partnerships and how those organizations grow. Um, so, I mean, really thank you guys for, you know, coming on today and sharing with us. I think there's some really great takeaways that, uh, yeah, people can benefit from. So with that, Nick, do you want to, you want to round us out here today? Yeah. I mean, the like one of the overarching goals of Kinetic is just general education for the industry. I think this webinar was a great resource for that. I think you guys shared a lot of interesting things. I think the concept of strategically approaching these uh, these partnerships is something everyone should think about. So like you guys, thanks for being on. Um, Kevin, Scott, like how do people reach out to you if somebody wants to uh, contact you? Kevin, go first. Uh, yeah, it's right down the screen. <laughs> Our <laughs> website is greenscreens.ai. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to hear more about the product or talk to us about our relationship with Tabby and HubTech, right, or or in general, um, go to the website. You can sign up for a demo, or you can just reach out to me, which is just kevin.coombs at greenscreens.ai. Perfect. Awesome. And Scott, how do they reach out to you? Yeah, go hubtech.com. Um, that you'll get a feel for all of our offerings we didn't even talk about today. Um, so there's a lot deeper in there. If you don't want to do the, you know, kind of sales song and dance, reach out to me direct on LinkedIn is going to be the easiest way. And we can redirect that conversation if needed. Um, but find me on there, reach out if you want direct answers and get to the point. I'm not a sales guy. So um, <laughs> I, I don't want we'll, to. My time we'll away. also, we will be at TIA in two weeks. Yes. Scott and I both. So we will be out there. Yep. Yeah. Find us there. We're, we're open books. Like Kevin said, we're, we're, we're both very open and honest. And so we're, we're down to discuss with anybody. Mm -hmm. Cool. Perfect. Well, that does it for today. We'll be showing, we'll be throwing up some clips of this over the next few weeks, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Kevin, Scott, thanks for being a part of it. That's it. Thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.